Hello, hola, hola, amigos, amigas. Welcome to Lima, Peru again. Welcome to another From Home session. It is such a pleasure to have you here in my home again. And in this occasion, discussing another controversial theme, another very interesting theme uh, about the, the history and the culture of Peru. In this series, we talk about uh, subjects, topics that are sometimes complicated even for us Peruvians to talk about. We discuss politics, we discuss uh, the uh, minorities, and we are going to discuss today about a, let's say, a, a type of for many people, cultural expression for also many people or oh, considered to be a crime oh, against oh, the animals, the tauromachia or the bullfighting in Peru, the history of bullfighting in Peru. So as a tour guide, uh, I actually love to talk about these things because this is what we do really. Uh, we don't just talk about, you know, the, the beautiful fountains and the plazas. We talk about the, uh, the culture of, of our nations. And well, today we're going to talk about this very interesting, also complicated topic. Uh, so I hope you find interesting today's event. Thanks so, so much for coming today. And also a disclaimer, we are not going to share any type of uh, images that are related with the very bullfight. It is going to be a, a historic explanation about the, the presence of bullfighting in Peru, how it came to Peru, and also uh, how it's seen nowadays by Peruvians. So, well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, amigo. Let me say hi to all my friends that are joining today. Hola, Marlene. Thanks for coming again. Gracias, amiga. Hi, Caitlin. Hello. Hi, Maria. Thanks for coming. Oh, it is a pleasure to have you. Hi, hi Trudy. Hi, culture. Thanks for coming. <laughs> so uh, today we're going to uh, talk about, well, the, the bullfighting, um, uh, well, also called uh, Toreo in, in Latin America. Uh, we're going to understand the, um, well, the history of, of this expression. And also, well, maybe we're going to give a, a look into a possible future related with this um, this activity. So, hola Marilu, thanks for coming. Muchas gracias, amiga. So I think we are ready to start. Hola Larry, we're ready to begin. Um, and as always, uh, you can share your comments, your questions here in the in the chat zone. I'm very happy to to see um, your your comments, to read them, uh, to read your question, answer your questions as well. So don't be shy with them. Uh, um, so I think we are going now to begin. Hola Marilu, no worries, we are here, we are about to start. Uh, so let's begin with this event. And um, well, as always, I have here my slides uh, about this, this theme, this topic. Uh, this is part of my controversial series of Peru. Uh, and today we're going to talk about the uh, bullfighting uh, in Peru, how it started, uh, what is the origin of this um, expression, which is also in Peru, consider a cultural expression. Uh, so we're going to understand a bit of, of this um, activity. And it's not just in Peru considered to be a cultural expression. It used to be in many countries in Latin America. Now again, so the number has been reduced considerably, uh, especially in the last, let's say 50 years. Gracias, Marlene. Thanks for your tip support, amiga. Gracias, gracias. Um, and also, well, in Europe, countries like like Spain, Portugal, and also France consider uh, bullfighting legal. No? But there are zones in, in these countries where it is illegal. For example, a few years ago, I learned that in Spain, in Catalonia, it is not anymore permitting, uh, permitted bullfighting. No? Uh, in Peru, today we're talking about Peru, it is considered legal, but it is associated usually with uh, festivities. Uh, it is not something uh, we do all the time and it's definitely uh, an, an activity that is starting to disappear in many parts of the country. Uh, but we're going first to the origins of bullfighting because it is important to understand uh, where it started, when it started. 
the tauromachia, uh, and, and let me explain what tauromachia means. That's the name uh, given to bullfighting. Um, tauro uh, means uh, bull in Greek, and makomai uh, means fighting. So fighting the bull uh, in Greek. Uh, and this is a, a very old activity, which, as we know, uh, existed about 3,000 years ago. It was the beginning of, of the tauromachia. No? But in the beginning, it, it was not uh, solely an activity connected with, let's say, killing the bull. In the beginning, it was a little bit more different. It was more related with sort of like athletic uh, displays um, with a bull. So I will explain this in a moment. Huh? Um, so the Tauriomachia was also connected with the worshiping of a god, god Mitra, mm -hmm, uh, which is also represented as the killer of bulls and also we continue talking about you know the, the greek period the, the greek times um well for celebrating mitra also bulls will kill mm -hmm. um but there was also another way to honor mitra which was as i said before not just killing the bulls also a uh, sort of like playing with the bulls this is the taurocatapsia mm -hmm. So the taurocatapsia consisted in sort of like um, uh, doing some uh, equilibrium, or oh, like what nowadays in the circuses, you know, uh, let's say the the actors or the the actresses, the performers will do with the bulls jumping over the bulls, for example. No, so these were all connected with the celebrations. These activities were connected with the celebration of God Mitra. But also, well, the killing of the bull and all of this activity you know, connected with the worshipping of the god eventually turned into being something very masculine or uh, very male uh, and also connected with the war. Uh, uh, so that's how, little by little, uh, it, it went in direction more of being an activity for men. Mm -hmm. So uh, now we are going to jump in the history to the medieval era uh, and to the maestranzas de caballería of Spain, right? So uh, we received uh, the, this, um, let's say, the, the tauromachia or, or the bullfighting from the Spanish conquistadors. The Spanish conquistadors, they had a history no, of, let's say, a, a culture connected with the bullfighting. But the history of bullfighting in Spain also, uh, it dates back to the medieval period in which the bullfighting as we know it nowadays was invented. So as you know already about 3,000 years ago, well, the, the idea of performing acts with the bulls, you know, emerged. But uh, later in Spain, um, as a way also of preparing uh, the uh, militaries in horses to be more aware during the fights, during the moments of the confrontation with the enemies, it came up the idea in these maestranzas, which were pretty much like schools, cavalry schools, no? equestrian schools, no? to use bulls, to use bulls to confront, let's say, the, the, the person in horse, you know, in a more realistic sort of like battle, right? But of course, the idea was not neither the bull or the, or the uh, let's say, the, the, the knight uh, will be killed. Uh, at some point, also, there were servants who distracted the bull uh, um, from the, let's say, the, the, the horse, right? So they used their capes, or uh, to, let's say, sort of like uh, try to uh, move the attention of the bull into a different direction. The bulls don't see well. The bulls have very, very limited sight. So they follow anything. They even follow a cape. Uh, because they believe, of course, that someone no, that is moving, they don't even see the shape very well, right? So this is the beginning of this activity uh, of, of the bullfighting as we know it. Initially, it was more uh, like just an exercise of cavalry, as you can see, for example, in these lithographies. Uh. So in Peru, 
uh, it came with the conquistadors, as you know already, no? Uh, in the colonial times, there were not so many entertainments, unfortunately, uh, for the Limanians of that time, no? The entertainments were limited and they were reduced to horse races or uh, dice or cards, playing cards, no? uh, and bull fighting. These were the first entertainments in Lima. Uh, but later, of course, other activities came, like theater, for example, cockfighting, no? and, and several other, even circuses, for example. But these are the first ways of entertainment back in the early colonial period. We're talking about the uh, 16th century, for example. Right? Uh, what about the first bull uh, fight? Uh, um, they are not clear evidences of um, which one of these years is really the, the first, when, when the first bullfight happened. Uh, the year 1538 uh, is pointed out in the famous book that I always uh, consult also for my events, my historic events in Lima, The Peruvian Traditions of Ricardo Palma. I highly recommend you to read this book if you have a time. It is online translated into English. So he points out that the first bullfight, the first corrida de toros, this is the way how it is called in Spanish, uh, happened uh, in this year uh, due to the defeat of the Almagristas. The Almagristas were the enemies of Pizarro. Uh, first Pizarro, Francisco Pizarro had a, a friend uh, and also a partner in the campaign in the conquest of this territory, Diego de Almagro, but later they fought, or they separated, and then later, you know, they became enemies. Uh, so when the Almagristas were defeated, Francisco Pizarro, he uh, conducted the first bullfight and he even was a torero. He fought also a bull in the main square of Lima. But there are not enough informations of this being true. There is another uh, date, another year, uh, that was uh, March 29th, 1540, in which seems that also another bullfight happened, and this was for Easter time. Uh, uh, so it could be one or the other, right? But uh, as you can see, the history of bullfighting in Lima and in Peru, it, it is quite old and is connected with the very beginning of the formation of our society, of our mixed blood society and culturally mixed society. So if you are wondering why uh, in Peru and in Latin America still this is a thing, it is because it came with the Catholic faith, and you know how important Catholic faith is in Peru, and people don't question about several things about the Catholic faith. Uh, faith is not questionable. And also some traditions are considered not to be questionable uh, by, let's say, uh, certain generations. Of course, younger people are more eager to question things. So the first Torero, you know, Torero is the bullfighter, was Francisco Pizarro, the conquistador of Peru, the founder of Lima. And look something really interesting. Francisco Pizarro was in his 60s when he fought the bull, but we know he did it on a horse and with a, a sort of like a long spear. So he, he, did, it, he did it in the way also uh, that was typical of that time, no? on a horse with a, with a long spear, right? pretty much like this image you see over here. No? So um, this was one of the ways how the bullfighters used to perform these acts. Um, also, this reminds me of uh, the, the origin of the bullfighting um, as the way we know it nowadays, as the way we understand it nowadays. Uh, because bullfighting is a way also, usually to when you are standing, you know, you are standing and you are uh, sort of like a, um, let's say, avoiding the, the bull to, to hit you. But the story of how that started, I've been able to consult different uh, websites, Spanish websites. It say, they say that it seems that uh, the servants of the knights, 
who were um, doing their exercises, horse exercises, you know, with the bulls back in the times of the maestranzas in Spain. Every time, for example, the bull was getting closer to them, you know, in order to avoid any accidents, these servants used to distract the bull with the cape. Oh, and that's how it really began. The tradition of bullfighting standing oh, because it used to be on a horse. Uh, this painting is really interesting. I, I found, I made the whole screenshot for you. Uh, it is a painting that is uh, that was on an auction, auction online, was sold for 47,000 47, uh, this is, uh, euros, right? And it is about a bullfighting in Lima. Oh, it says Corrida de Toros en la Plaza Mayor de Lima. Oh, bullfighting in the main square of Lima. Just to give you an idea uh, that um, also these type of teams are uh, quite solicited by uh, specialists in, in art. So focusing on this painting, you can see the main square of Lima and some really interesting things because originally the bullfighting used to happen in the main squares. They were not the so-called arenas, you know, that nowadays are called the arenas. Um, they were not really a specialized places originally in Lima to, uh, to have Corrida de Toros. Uh, instead, the main squares were adapted. They were enclosed. Oh, and there was a purpose also to do that because around the main square, we used to have the houses of the authorities of that time. We had the house of the, uh, let's say, mayor. We had, or the office of the mayor. We had the house of the viceroy. And we had also the cathedral. So the archbishop, the viceroy, and the mayor could see the fight uh, without moving from the offices' ho houses, right? So that's the reason why the um, this this activity was done in the main square, not just in Lima, also in the main squares in Latin America. Uh, why we had bullfighting in colonial times in Lima? Well, uh, and, and why we, uh, we were celebrating back in the old days this type of activities, no? What was the purpose of them? So um, they were not happening every day, every year, every week, no. They were very special, uh, let's say, uh, activities, uh, celebrations, sort of, because they were connected with the birth of monarchs, for example. They were connected with religious, uh, uh, let's say, festivities, Easter, for example, the assumption of a new saint, uh, uh, events that were related with the church uh, and with the monarchy. Mm -hmm. So this is also another painting of Lima in the colonial times. You can see the Cathedral of Lima, uh, which you probably have seen in other tours of mine when we have been in the main square. It's exactly the same how uh, it looks nowadays and, and back in, in the times when this painting was made. So you can imagine that the whole square was all like enclosed, right, around, and the bull was played uh, in this section of the square. But there were many accidents that occur because of, you know, this not this unstable type of uh, arena that was created because the bull sometimes jump off that. Uh, also, drunken men used to get inside the arena into the the ring the bullfighting ring and um, also another thing that happened is that these activities were considered like big parties so uh, there were not proper bathrooms for everybody like everything was a really big mess after the uh, bullfighting so that's why it was necessary eventually uh, to request um, the authorities requested the creation of a bull ring mm -hmm. also uh, here some paintings from the time of the 19th century, early 19th century, in which you can see, for example, the torero, all represented with this sort of like a puppet uh, in, in this um, sort of like a festivities, processions in the streets of Lima. Uh, and this is oh, this was a way how to call people to, uh, to come to the bull ring. Mm -hmm. uh, also, in this painting, you can see, well, probably it's, it's a little bit distant from you, but is uh, about you know like a, it has a sign over here that it says 
to come to Acho, which is the uh, bull ring, the bull ring of Lima, the one that was created to meet the needs of the citizens because uh, the city was way too big, were way too overpopulated, so it was impossible to continue running these uh, bullfights in the main square. Uh, also, there were more that happened after the creation of the bull ring in the main square, but um, it was for a short time, to be honest. No? Later, uh, they were exclusively made in the bull ring of Acho, which you're going to see in a little while. So, um, also here some curious uh, notes about the bullfighting. Originally, the bullfighting used to happen on Sundays because Sunday was the resting day, the day when people used to have free time to go out uh, and participate of these activities. But there, there was a problem that nobody wanted to go to the church to mass on uh, on Sunday because they wanted to go to the bullfight. Um, so that's why the church requested to be moved the day of the bullfights to Mondays. But then later, you know, there was another correction of the day and it turned back to be Sunday because uh, people started to complain that uh, Limanians were not going to work on Monday because they wanted to go to the bullfighting. So it became a problem, a major problem in Lima, the day when bullfighting uh, should happen. Uh, also, in some of the cases, and this is uh, also a historic fact, there was several bulls killed in just one day of bullfight. Uh, there's one case, for example, of up to 35 bulls killed in one of these corridas. Corrida is the bullfight. And also talking about the Corrida de Toros, uh, the, the bullfight uh, of Lima, it is important to remember about, um, for example, some characters of our history who were uh, very inclined to the bullfight uh, and also were promoters of some of, let's say, reforms that benefited this uh, activity. Uh, for example, Viceroy Manuel Amadi Juniet, he's very famous, not because of the bullfights, but he's more famous because he had a famous lover, uh, the Perricholi, and the Perricholi uh, was a, a, a lover that was very, very young in comparison to him. She was in her early 20s and he was nearly his 70s when they started their relation, uh, uh, which was really one of the reasons why Mr. Manuel Amadi Juniet was, let's say, uh, considered to be a controversial leader of that time. But he tried to do a lot of things to benefit the city and, and to be loved. And one of the things he did was uh, creating the um, the bull ring. Oh, by the way, there is a really interesting story I want to tell you right now about a, a sort of like a triangle, love triangle. That well, there is this is a legend. Let's say this is a story that it has really no historic foundation, but uh, it is a really interesting story that I will also uh, now uh, narrate to you. So, um, well, we know that the love. Uh, Manuel Amadi Junior had for the Perricholi, uh, for Micaela Villegas, uh, was very deep, very fond. Uh, but also, they were never married. So it seems that she, which because she was very pretty, very, very good looking, and she was an actress, uh, she also called the attention of all other men. There was another man, uh, Mr. Ingunza, who wanted to be with her. The story says that the Viceroy noticed that, and uh, he was really, really angry. So uh, this happened, of course, after the bull ring was finished. So the story says that he decided to forbid Mr. Ingunza to come to the bullfight uh, because he knew his intentions with his lover, La Perricholi. So Mr. Ingunza, he was very, very rich, of course, and what he did was building a towel right next to the bull ring, uh, higher than the bull ring. So in that way, he could see the uh, the bullfight without needing to come inside the bull ring and without needing to pay a ticket to get inside. So this is one of the most famous stories that we have around uh, the construction of this bull ring. Uh, the, this towel you see over there is the uh, Torre de Ingunza or Mirador de Ingunza. Mirador is a viewpoint. Uh, but well, uh, this is just a story uh, because uh, we know 
know that the, um, the this, this towel is not from the same period of the construction of the wool ring, but it's, it's a very popular story. Everybody believes it to be true. <laughs> so that's why I'm telling you also this interesting story because it also shows, gracias Larry, thanks for your tip support, amigo. It also shows the, um, also the, the, the aversion people had back then towards the Pericholi, no? The Pericholi was a, a beautiful woman. She was an actress. She was a, a, a very, very strong woman and very fierce, no? And for nowadays time, I, I think she would be like considered a tremendous personality, maybe an influencer. But back then, you know, she, she was judged because she lived, he, she was born in a time that was not good for, for her. Anyways, so we continue with the bullfighting ring. Uh, and we have also a, a really interesting thing about the, the story of this construction. Um, this bullfighting ring is still is in use because as I said in the beginning in Peru, bullfighting is not illegal. It is not something that makes happy everybody, to be very honest. Um, there is also a big anti, uh, let's say, bullfighting movement in Peru. Um, but, um, well, it is it is still a legal activity. So um, the building where the bullfighting happens is a historic building, which is really impressive because it's the third oldest bull ring in the world. We have in Peru, the third oldest bull ring in the world and the oldest of America. No, it was built in 1766, mm? and it was built during the time of Viceroy Amat. Oh? So the picture you see here is impressive uh, with the uh, hill uh, that you see behind, which was an ancient Apu or a Incan guardian of our city before the coming of the conquistadors. Um, there are all the bull rings, uh, older of course than this one. Remember this is the third one um, uh, in Lima. Yes, Marlene, yes, this one here is in Lima. Uh, uh, actually very close to the main square where I take you usually to my on my city tours of Lima. Uh, one day we're going there also to see it um, from outside because it's part of my circuit related with RIMAC, the history, the history of RIMAC. But um, the other two that are older than this one are Spanish. They are not Peruvian. Uh, we have the Plaza Bejar uh, in Spain. There's another in Spain and Plaza de Ronda in Andalusia, both in Spain. Okay, so um, this is the way how the bull ring uh, look back in the colonial times. It had had some modifications, of course, some changes, especially to increment the size of the, um, let's say, the, the, the seats uh, in the in the bull ring, uh, and also that's an image of of Lima back in the old times, in the colonial times. Uh, we're talking about the end of the 18th century. You can see even the towels of the churches of Lima back in those days, which we can see still today uh, in downtown uh, Lima. So here you can see, oh, well, this is the, the towel of Ingunza. Maybe you remember the story I just mentioned. And it is right in front of the bullfighting ring. It is called Plaza de Toros de Acho. So Acho the meaning of this word, we don't use anymore that word in the modern Spanish, but in the old Spanish, in old Castilian, an acho was a promontory or an elevated zone from which you could see the ocean. And that zone is quite elevated in comparison to the rest of, of Lima, of the city, the historic center. So from there, you could see the ocean in the old days. That's why it was called Plaza de Toros de Acho. Uh, one famous character related with or connected with the bullfighting back in the old days in the 19th century is Juana Breña or Juana la Marimacho. For my friends who were uh, with me in my controversial series dedicated to the LG. TBQ plus community, the history of the community, gay community in Peru. Uh, we talk about her. Uh, what is a marimacho? In the old days, a marimacho was a woman that dressed up and behaved like a man. Um, and also in contrary, uh, uh, the word marica was given to a man that dressed up or behave uh, or have conducts associated traditionally with women, right? So those were the ways how people used to call uh, men and women which were not 
like a, in the in in the uh, uh, standard, right? Uh, so Juana la Marimacho was a bullfighter, uh, one of the most famous bullfighters of Lima, and she was a woman, of course. Vera, what an interesting thing. Anyways, uh, she had a really tragic story because um, she was very fierce. We know she was remembered to be a fierce woman. She she was very famous between the 1820s and 1830s. Um, but in one occasion, she was not really that lucky. Uh, she didn't die during the bullfight, but uh, she was very injured. And, um, well, people believe she would die. So seems that at the end, she got very, she was very religious. So she promised God that if she was saved, she didn't die, she will not go again back to do something a business of a man uh, but later she became a butcher <laughs> so uh, what an interesting way of making peace no, with with her situation or no? she was not you know killing bulls in the in the uh, arena you know in the bull ring but later uh she became a butcher right uh, the story of juana breña uh is one of the many other uh, of, of of bullfighters today we're not going to talk about all the bullfighters of the history of peru but basically we're going to understand a little bit of how what happened no, with bullfighting nowadays, no? Because, um, for example, the Plaza de Toros oh, was a place from where the first um, hot air balloon that we had in Lima, uh, let's say, took off. No? So what an interesting thing, right? Um, the, the plaza was used for, uh, let's say, political events. Or, uh, and also the bullfighting in Peru uh, was associated since the beginning with the religion, as you know. In the 1950s, um, the, the group that uh, belonged to the, uh, let's say, an sphere, an elite sphere, because this is more, this is a activity that is connected usually with the elite uh, in Latin America, uh, decided to connect the uh, bullfighting with a very important festivity that we have in Peru uh, until nowadays, the Lord of the Miracles, Señor de los Milagros. So that's why we have a, a every year every year in lima a uh, bullfighting during the month of october end of october beginning of november um but the bulls also are connected with um different there are different ideas about a uh, uh, them no that for example the idea of the strength of the animal the vitality of the animal in peru there is a um, sort of like a, a really interesting presence of bulls in the art, in the traditional folklore of, of Peru. Um, so you can see, for example, here, the traditional Torito de Pucará from the Andes. Oh? And the Torito de Pucará, which are painted in beautiful colors, when you get a Torito, uh, you have to buy them in couples. You don't buy them alone because the idea is the Torito uh, uh, will be always with a, with, a, with a couple, with a mate, right? And they are related with prosperity. Hmm? And also to finish with this, uh, let's say, event, it's important to understand that in Peru, uh, this theme is, is controversial. That's why it's part of this event was part of my series of controversial uh, events, um, because there is a big movement that is called anti-taurino, also is against the tauromachia. Um, they perform uh, like different kinds of activities, especially in the months of October, November, because those are the months when uh, we have the Corrida de Toros of the bullfight in Lima, which is the biggest city in Peru. Um, but the bullfighting uh, in, in all Peru and also around the world has sort of like evolved and changed. And in some places, uh, the idea is not anymore to kill the bull. The idea is to play with the bull. The idea is, for example, San Fermin, and, and you see in Spain, these big, you know, like events in which the bulls really are chasing people. <laughs> so, um, and, and I was saying also that the uh, probably the future of bullfighting will be not to kill anymore the bull. It will be more related with uh, sort of like doing some type of uh, 
ac acrobatic movements with the bull or let's say trying to uh, like not be killed by the bull or, or things like that because the world is also evolving we are evolving and um, now for example it is forbidden to pass in the television the corrida de toros because we have to be careful with the children we are not eager anymore to permit children to see these type of events in television so i am sharing with you as always gracias kaylin thanks for your tip support gracias gracias my uh bibliography and bibliography all the sources i've been able to to use for today's event they are in spanish uh, but of course you are able to to check on them if you want to practice your spanish and see from where i got all this information it is really a pleasure to have you today thank you so much amigos amigas for coming uh, i really hope you enjoy Enjoy this uh, activity uh, and also with my controversial series please give me any suggestions on future themes future topics you would like me to talk about and um, my, my, my wish is that you understand better the history and the culture of Peru through this series that I'm conducting from home also if you want to follow my channel you have a, an, a, the upper section of follow button so you can also see my upcoming events I am doing events uh, of all kinds this month that is coming uh, uh basically no, the rest of uh let's say the month or uh, also december uh, is going to be all about christmas 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 so we have lots of activities here my husband and i we are coordinating because he's a tour guide also they're like creating these events for you all about understanding christmas uh peruvian traditions in christmas uh, what we eat in christmas uh, christmas markets everything so if you want to know what is coming soon give me a follow in the upper part and also i want to invite you uh, to become my sponsors if you become my sponsor also you can help me every month with a little little uh, fee to continue producing this material and these events for you all and as a way to give you something in return i am writing two books that um are, are one about peruvian food and the other one is about a well lima is a guidebook of lima which i will be giving you of course uh, like as, as a gift as a present from me uh, thanking you for your support also if you're one of my supporters you can you can also let me know send me a message please send me a, a, a email so i can send you the books right away uh in pdf mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yes mary lou mary lou thank you oh thanks for being my sponsor my dear and also i, I need a uh, you to get in touch with me like with the uh email so i can send you the books see and and every month i am updating the books uh because i am adding more things so marilu please send me a message and uh for my friends also you can send me a message to uh, at info at adventurostravelguide.com uh, uh, also my information is in my channel profile okay so well thank you thank you so much gracias if you wish to support this event also there's a uh, button i have activated that can help you to to help me with a tip but if you cannot do it that's okay please uh, just keep coming keep joining that is the the motor of, of my um my let's say my activities is just sharing the history of peru with you all gracias a todos thank you so much have a lovely rest of the day uh rest of the evening is turning dark as you can see here in lima so it's sending you lots of love from from the city to you all have a lovely rest of the evening, rest of the day. Bye-bye. Ciao. Gracias. Thank you.